Well, at CES 2020, we're going to see a lot of emerging applications for 5G and AI. Why? These are ingredient technologies that are going into a lot of different solutions, but are going to make a lot, of, a lot more innovative solutions possible. So we'll hear narratives there. Also, get ready for more applications for AR and VR. A lot of these trends develop over a long time series. So, so AR and VR applications, a lot of different use cases for these. We'll learn about those. And also, we'll see new hardware, uh, lighter, better headsets, for example. In transportation and mobility, get ready for flying cars. A lot of innovation around the first and last kilometer these days, but we're starting to address these more intermediate range solutions. Uh, and last but not least, the biggest thing in consumer technology today is smart cities. And we're going to see a lot of innovation solutions around resilience, uh, also enabling smart cities to stand up around the world. Uh, and last but not least, travel and tourism. This is a new area that we're focusing on, and so there'll be solutions there because everybody likes a holiday, and there's a lot of tech that can help with that. Well, it's important to come to CES each and every year because that is the place where we get updates on a variety of trends and we always discover and uncover the new, the innovative. And if you're not there, then you're, you're not able to experience these things a lot of times for the first time. So again, uh, as, as the world stage for, for, for innovation, uh, it's really, really important to come to CES each and every year, get updated on the, the trends, find out what the new is, because very often these days, the new very quickly becomes the normal, and nobody wants to be left behind. So CES is the place to, to really get updated on technology and innovation trends, and conveniently, it's right at the beginning of the year. Uh, so you're making a great start. Well, I think as we move into the next decade, which I really characterize as the data age, because data underpins everything that we're doing these days, whether it's, it's business or our, in our culture. And so I think moving forward, really, while we're, we're anchoring to a smart device today, I don't think that's going to be the case maybe in the, in the next five to 10 years. I think we'll have more AR glasses, we'll have different wearables. So people will have a choice where we have some of these choices now, but we continue to improve them, and I think in the next decade, life will be augmented in some way. And so again, we'll be wearing glasses some of the time, so, so we'll have options, uh, and maybe we switch these things up depending on the use case, uh, depending on what we're looking to do. But uh, the smartphone will still be relevant. It's important to, to understand that. Uh, but we're gonna have a lot more uh, digital accoutrements uh, to help us as we move through life. Well, I think, I think a couple of things spring to mind. One is another reason to come to CES. I'm the vice president of research at CTA, the owner and producer of CES, and we've done a lot of research uh, from our attendees. And what they say through our surveys is that they conduct on average 33, so that's 33 meetings uh, each year uh, at CES. And so that saves a lot of flying around the world to, to meet with different people, you can get a lot accomplished in just four days. So that's helpful to the environment. But more, CES showcases so many different discrete technologies that are aimed to uh, improve the environment, like clean air and clean water, these resilient technologies. But also, you get to see the overall impact of innovation around uh, protecting the environment and, and enabling digital tools uh, to solve food scarcity, to, to solve air pollution and so many different things. So again, uh, I hope that you'll join us uh, for CES 2020 in Las Vegas, January 7th through 10th.